Income tax, 2021-2022, Child and Dependent Care Expenses Credit, Line Instructions, Part 3. Get ready to get refunds to the max, diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found at the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2021 IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. We're down here in the credit area of the Income Tax Formula. Credits and deductions, both goods, but if you had a dollar credit versus a dollar deduction, credit basically better because you get the entire dollar of the credit in general, whereas the dollar worth of deduction would be a decrease to the taxable income, the tax then being calculated upon it. Note that the credits can be in two main categories. We could think about them as non-refundable credits and refundable credits. Non-refundable credits not taking the tax liability below zero. The refundable credits may, and if they did, you would get a refund, but it's not really a refund in that case. It's more kind of like a benefit type program. Some credits might have a non-refundable and refundable portion to them. This is the second page of the Form 1040. We would generally have the information rolling into Schedule 3 and then rolling into the second page here, line 31 on the Form 1040. This is the Form 2441 that we're considering now. This is the child and dependent care expenses. So we're looking at line eight this time. Enter on line eight, the decimal amount shown next to that applies to the amount on line seven. If line seven is over $438,000, don't complete line eight, enter zero on line 9A. You may be able to claim a credit on line 9B. So if we look at our statement, this is what we have thus far. We're going down here basically to line eight. So thus far, we've been entering the information for who we pay to the care uh, to the care provider. We've got then the credit for the child and dependent care expenses. We then have our, our list of our generally our dependents that we paid uh, the care on behalf of or for. And then we've got the calculation three uh, through six. And now we're down here on line number eight and we're entering our our percent here on line number eight and if we were to check out the instructions enter on line eight the decimal amount shown below that applies to the amount on line seven we're noting that line seven is basically the income amounts that we had put in place and we talked about them in the prior presentation that we had to break out on a spouse by spouse basis for lines four and line five so in this case, that was 50 and 20 getting us up uh, to 70. And then line eight, enter on line eight, the decimal amount that shows that, apply okay, this is all messed up. Quick recap of what we've looked at so far. We've gone through the column A, column B, part one, which is the persons or organizations who provided the care. So this is the people that we actually paid. We've got the one organization here in the example. Then we have the credit for the child and dependent care expenses. We've got the two individuals here. These are typically dependents that we're paying the care provider on behalf for those dependents. We have the two listed, but only the one that we're providing the care for. Line three basically uh, gives us that 16,000 calculation. Then we had the calculation of the earned income. If married, you need both spouses to have their income lines that we talked about in prior presentations. We got the 50 and the 20 here. That's gonna bring us to this line number seven which is the 70,000. And now we're moving on to line eight here, which says enter on line eight, the decimal amount shown below that applies to the amount on line seven. So if line seven is 125,000 or less, so you can see like an income threshold there, then enter 50 or 0.5, 50% on line eight. If line seven is over 125,000 and no more than 438,000, see instructions for line eight for the amount to enter. So then you're gonna have like that phase out, which is gonna be done by adjusting that percentage. If line seven is over 438,000, don't complete line eight, enter zero on line 9A. Uh, you may be able to claim the credit on line 9b so then you'd have to go on to line b and continue on there so line 8 then says enter on line 8 the decimal amount shown next to that applies uh, to the amount on line 7 if line 7 is over 438,000, don't complete line 8 enter zero on line 9a so that's the general idea here's kind of like 
uh, the phase out schedule, so the 2021 phase outs. So for example, if I was to enter, if I was to increase the income here, so now I'm at 170,000, I'm over the 125, therefore the rate needs to be pulling from the table. It's no longer 50%, but now it's at that uh, point uh, two seven. So software is useful or helpful at that point in time to help us out with the phase outs, of course. Line 9B, if you had qualified expenses for 2020 that you didn't pay until 2021 and you didn't claim a credit on the maximum amount of qualified expenses for 2020, you may be able to increase the amount of the credit you can take in 2021. To figure that credit, complete worksheet 8 at the end of these instructions. Enter on line 9B the amount from line 13 of worksheet A. The amount on line B is a refundable credit for 2021 if you check the box on line B. Example, in 2020, Kate had uh, child care expenses of $2,600 for her 12-year-old child. Of the $2,600, she paid, she paid $2,000 in 2020 and $600 in 2021. Kate will use the worksheet A to figure her credit uh, on the 2020 expenses paid in 2021. The credit for these expenses will be entered on her uh, 2021 form line 9B. So if we jump back on over to the forms here, that possibly would be on line 9B. Now, when you have this crossover from a prior year to a current year, it's useful, it's nice to have software that's gonna help you to, to populate some of that information. So anytime you got that kind of carryover kind of situation, your tax return's getting a bit more complicated, it might be easier if it's a new client to enter the data all into the prior year return and then match it up and then use the carry forward uh, information to help you to populate uh, the current return in those instances. So so there's uh, just a quick look at that line 10. Uh, add lines 9A and 9B and enter the result in line 10. Uh, if you check the box in line B, this is your refundable credit for child and dependent care expenses. Enter the amount from this line on Schedule 3, Form 1040, line 13G. So now we're going to go back on over and say, okay, now we've got the amount that's been calculated here, which is going to be from A, uh, I got the 8,000, the 525, that's the 8,525. Now we marked off up top here, which is generally marked off the check box for B, that means it's refundable generally. So then if I go to the schedule three, page two, we've got it populated here, then it pulls into the form 1040 and it's in like the refundable kind of area down below is the general idea so if you didn't check box b go to line 11. so if we didn't check box b which is the more unusual type of situation if we go to box b here and say we don't want that checked we're going to say no check there then now as i go through it uh we we've got then the amount's not going to pull through because you're going to have basically it's not going to be all uh, refundable. So when we ultimately pull it over to Schedule C, you could you could see it's I'm um, Schedule Three. It's in the credit for child and dependent care expenses up top, as opposed to in the refundable portion. And when it pulls then ultimately to the uh, Form 1040, now it's coming from it's coming up here as opposed to being down in the refundable so that's more of the unusual uh, kind of situation so if you don't check the box b you got to go to line 11 and continue on from there so line 11 only complete line 11 if you did not check uh, the box on line b so that's the more unusual situation line b having to do with whether you lived in uh in the united states so box b recap B for 2021, your credit for child and dependent care expenses is refundable if you or your spouse, if married, filing joint, had a principal place of abode in the United States for more than half of 2021. So that's when it would be checked. If it was not checked, then that would be the more kind of unusual situation. If you don't check the box on line B, your credit is non-refundable and limited by the amount of your tax. So if it's non-refundable, it's in that non-refundable area. That means you can't take it below kind of uh, zero in that case uh, and get a refund even without a, like a tax liability. Uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot enter on Schedule 3, Form 1040, Line 13G, amount from Line 10. So we saw the difference on the Schedule C or 3 
where it's reported. Instead, you must complete the credit limit worksheet next to uh, next to figure the amount to enter on line 11. The non-refundable credit on line 11 is reported on Schedule 3, 3 Form 1040, line 2. So we got the credit limit little worksheet here. I won't go through it in detail, but uh, software helps with the calculation. Line 12, enter the total amount of the dependent care benefits you received in 2021. Amounts you received as an employee should be shown in box 10 of your form of your forms W-2. However, don't include amounts reported uh, in box 10 that exceed your plan's exclusion and are therefore reported as wages in box one. So box 12 is on page uh, two, which is part three, and it says enter the total amount of dependent care benefits you received in 2021. Amounts you received as an employee should be shown in box 10 of the form W-2. So if you have the trusty W-2 here, you you have the box 10, which is the dependent care benefits. And when you populate the W-2, then it would it would populate for you. So you go in here and say, okay, then I've got box uh, number 10 for the W-2. And let's say that it was, it was like 2000 in box uh, 10, then that 2000 generally of, of income, if it was not included in income by the employer, then that we're assuming it wouldn't be included in box one. That's kind of part of the point here. And if it's not included in part one, line one of the W-2, you already got the benefit for it. That's the that's part of the point. So it's not being taxed for federal income tax purposes. Therefore, you can't really double it up here and get a benefit with a credit as well. So that's going to be that's going to be the idea. So if I pull that on over, then I put the full amount that we paid, you'll recall on page one, the full amount that was paid here. But then I've got this amount of the 2000 that's pulling in from that W2 data input, which which is making uh, the adjustment. And in essence, the 16,000 that I had before is basically being reduced by the 2000, which pulls over to page one. So now I've got up here, the 14 is kind of like the starting point as opposed to the 16 that it was before. That's the kind of just a general way that's gonna pull through. So the ARP permits employers to increase the maximum amount that can be excluded from an employee's income through a dependent care assistance program for 2021, the maximum amount uh, increased to 10,500. So that's generally where the, you know, the cap would be uh, for the ability to, to take advantage of that program and reduce the amount you would think then in box one of the W-2 for you know that program. So for married employees filing separately, uh, returns the maximum amount is increased to 5,250, previously 2,500. So then line 13, if you had an employer provided dependent care plan, your employer may have permitted you to carry forward any unused amount from 2020 to use in 2021. Enter on line 13, the amount you carried forward. Temporary special rules for unused amounts in dependent care FSA section 214 of the Taxpayer Certainty and Disaster Tax Relief Act of 2020 allows your employer to amend its dependent care plan to allow employees to carry over unused benefits from a plan year ending in 2020 to a plan year ending in 2021 from a plan year ending in 2020 to a plan year ending in 2022 from plan year ending in 2021 to a plan year ending in 2022. Alternatively, your employer may extend the claims period for a plan year ending in 2020 or 2021 to 12 months after the end of the plan year for unused benefits remaining in the dependent care FSA. Your employer can tell you whether your dependent care plan was amended unused amounts from 2020 are added to the maximum amount dependent care benefits that are allowed for 2021. So obviously you might want to talk to your employer in these instances and see if they if they basically took these into consideration and uh, get more detail on that particular uh, instance from them in that case. So for, for more information about these rules, you can see these uh, various publications. I won't go through them here. You can find them on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. So line 13 continued, if you have an employer provided dependent care plan, your employer may have permitted you to carry forward any unused amount from 2020 to use in 2021. Enter on line 13, 
the amount you carried forward. Temporary carry forward rule for dependent care FSAs were dependent aged out during the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. Okay, so Section 214 of the Taxpayer Certainty and Disaster Tax Relief Act of 2020 allows the employer to amend its dependent care plan to extend the maximum of the eligible dependents from 12 to 13 for dependent care FSAs for un unused amounts from the 2020 plan year carry over into the 2020 plan year. So the 2020 plan year carried over into the 2021 plan year. Your employer can tell you whether uh, your dependent care plan was amended. If your employer's plan has adopted this change, you may use the, the unused dependent care benefits from the 2020 plan uh, year carried over into 2021 plan year to pay for a child under age 14 for 2021. This relief only applies to amounts received from a dependent care plan and entered on form 2441 line 13. It does not apply to amounts paid outside a dependent care plan. For more information about this, you can see notice 2021-15.